What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. We are headed to Paco Bell. We are on a little lunch date. Nos escapamos por un ratito so we can go get some lunch and catch up with each other because I haven't seen Jonathan in like three days. And also we're like, well, well, we catch up. We should catch you guys up and update you because the last time we did an updated Q&A was a year ago probably. Or Such a long time a ago. Long, long I think it was before ago. Franco was born. Yeah, so we decided we should do that so we can update you guys and let you know where our life is right now. Because I love seeing that with other uh, other YouTubers that I watch too. So because you can kind of see their life going, but you don't know the exact details sometimes because yeah. their videos are just the overall picture. Yeah, and sometimes I watch vlogs and I'm like, oh, when did they get that? When did they move? When did you know? So I was like, let's update them today, catch up with you guys, and reconnect. All right, guys, we're gonna do a rapid fire update. So what that means is we're gonna just update you before we get into the questions. Yeah. So I think we're gonna answer a lot of questions before even reading them. So basically, in this whole year, we had a baby. Number yep. one. I mean, we're going from most important to like things that really don't matter. Yeah. But just that, it's good to know. We became parents to a baby boy that is 15 months old now. He repeats funny words after us now. <laughs> <laughs> and he runs away from us when he grabs the air freshener from the wall. It's, <laughs> yep. Because he knows that's bad. <laughs> yep. He loves, is obsessed with Chai and Ozo. Literally, as soon as he wakes up, that's the first thing he wants to see is the dogs. A lot of people have asked our their relationship with Franco. And we've never really talked about it. We kind of just show that they love each other. Mm -hmm. But Chai and Franco, let's start with Chai and Franco. At the beginning, it was a very like, okay, you're new around these parts. I'm kind of jealous of you type thing, right? Yeah. She Not jealous in like she would do something to Franco. No lo pelaba para nada. She didn't even acknowledge his existence. Yeah. And now that he walks and plays and he throws them the toy her toy and he gives them treats chai's like all right you're you're kind of cool you yeah. know she she's like that like brother that like will beat you up like and i mean chai like will like knock franco over when they're playing fetch but like when it comes down to people knock at the door and stuff she runs to like stand right next to him or if he's walking around and we kind of like cooking and he's walking by himself i've noticed chai walks next to him and stuff yeah. like that she's very protective over him which is kind of crazy but they do really love each love each other and We've been through a lot together. Like, Franco was about six months when we moved into our new town and our new house. And Chai and Ozo, like, went through that changing stage together. So, at this new home that we've lived in for a year already, we all went through that change together. So, it feels more connected, in a sense. And it's good that we're updating you now because in a year from now, we're going to be in a whole different town again. Mm -hmm. You know? Ozo. Ozo, they're like brothers. That's the best way to put it. They wrestle, they fight, they love each other. They, yeah, but Ozo's been nothing but a great dog. No, te lo da Ozo. Oh, oh, corny corny's oh, thriving shit. and Franco. I think like a couple months ago he recently noticed him so now when corny moves around the cage franco runs to it because he wants to see him so that's amazing they he loves all of our pets reptiles are smarter than you guys think that's all i'm gonna say <laughs> they know shit guys i feel like that's why they've lived for so long they're dinosaurs and i don't think you just stick around this planet for so long without being something well, else he's something. an <laughs> undercover he's like platy the platy the pup. what's his name Perry, Perry the platypus. Perry the platypus. Yeah. <laughs> he has a secret life when we're not looking. Seriously. Yeah. Because how he's not scared of Ozer or Chai, and he's not scared of Franco. But like, he gets nervous, and he knows when to eat, and like, I don't know. I feel like he knows yeah. more than we think. Yeah, I think so too. Uh, another update. Um, oh, basically, you guys got the gist that we moved. Obviously, we did a house tour and stuff like that. Update on the town we moved to. I think that's a good update. Oh yeah. So everything happens for a reason, guys. Uh, we didn't. I mean, it's common sense. We would have told you if we would have bought this house, but we're renting. So with that being said, everything happens for a reason. Because, okay, we live in this little town. We lived in this little town named Longmont, right? But Longmont is growing and it's getting really expensive. So what everyone was doing, like people our age, my parents, there's this town next to us called Firestone. Brand new houses, super big, way cheaper Everything's cheaper. Imagine just cheaper and nicer, right? Because it's a new community, so more safety and stuff. So everyone was starting to buy houses out here. And that's what we were going to do. But for some reason, we're like, let's rent a year first. See yeah. how we like Firestone. We do not like it. It's it's a nice little town. It's great for that. But we, it's like we miss, it's like your toxic boyfriend. We miss the 
la mala vida. You yeah, know? we do. And it's it's just too far from things. It's far from like stores. It's far from my parents, from our gyms. Target. It's also, yeah, it's far from Target. And you just feel secluded kind of or like, mm -hmm. you know, you just feel far away from everything. It's just, it's very nice. But we would much rather spend the extra money in yeah. Logmont than stay here because... It's too much like i cannot imagine living here for more another year so imagine buying a house here absolutely not girl. yeah so like when i say i know i i won't get tired of repeating that guys but if you're good to the world the world will be good to you and god and you have faith i feel like god looks over us so much and we don't even notice it but if we would have bought a house it would have been a pain because we would have to at least lived here for two years before mm -hmm. you can rent it i believe or something like that and then if the market would have been good we probably would have lost money yes. but now no matter how expensive it is in Longmont, we're going back to our little town over there, you know? Yeah. It's not, we make it seem worse than it is. It's not no freaking, you know, East LA, you know, ratchet vibes. It's just no. like, it's... It's just not the best vibes. Yeah, but it's our vibe. <laughs> yeah. We're moving back there, hopefully, here soon. So we, as much as this is an update Q&A, our life is changing in literally a month and a half. So stay tuned for the upcoming moving vlogs. Doing everything again, the garage sale, the moving vlogs, the reorganizing and everything. So watch out for that coming soon as well because we have a limited time here. All right, guys, before we head to talk about, huge shout out to Dave for sponsoring this video. You know, we've all been there. We either have an unexpected medical expense or like us a few years ago when a chai had to almost get her freaking uterus removed that would have been a very unexpected vet bill or you get into a fender bender and you don't have the money to pay for it immediately dave is here to help you out of a pinch when you really need it dave is a banking app that could help you get up to 500 dollars instantly with extra cash and with dave there's no interest late fees or credit check you can finally tackle those expenses that have been stressing you out millions of people have already downloaded the dave app to get the financial relief they need with extra cash so if you're ever in a pinch and need extra help download dave and think of it as a gift from future you download dave today at dave.com slash j and j vlogs that's dave.com slash j and j vlogs sign up for an extra cash account and get up to 500 dollars instantly for terms and conditions go to dave.com slash legal instant transfer fees apply banking services provided by evolve member fdic and then the number four please we're at the five-star restaurant named Taco Bell. Three days know? might be an exaggeration to you guys, but when you spend 24 hours with your significant other. And baby. And baby. Three days is a long time. And baby days, that's a long time. She told me like five different things that he learned to do or started doing. Yeah. Like when he falls, he says, oh shit. <laughs> That is the craziest <laughs> one. He literally falls and he's like, oh, shh. My mom caught it. She's like, why is she saying that? I'm like, oh, my God. Because everything, every time something happens, we're like, oh, shit. Yeah. So I think we entered the stage where we cannot be saying bad The words. perico stage. Yeah, and not that saying. kind of perico, guys. Ya se volaron. Yeah. Not us saying health journey and we're outside Taco Bell. Dude, I just saw that my meal contains 700 calories to 1,300 calories. Oh, that's all we're eating today. Plus your soda. Mm. Maybe that's what the soda is. All right, we got our food. Babe, what'd you get? I'm getting deja vu, babe. Mm -hmm. I feel like throwback to this video right here. We did uh, our first video all Spanish, I think. No. Remember that one? Yeah. Well, I'm talking about the one that was... Um, mm. We were eating Taco Bell too, and we had just gotten married, didn't we? I know, engaged. Oh, I haven't had a crunch wrap in so freaking long. Guys, I'm going ham because I have not ate. It's one on the dot, and I'm intermittent fasting. But I'm supposed to eat at 12 or 11. I'm starving, so maybe this wasn't a good idea. Literally, if you get Taco Bell and you don't get a large Mountain Dew Baja Blast, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. Amor, come here. I'm starving. Babe, you have to pace yourself. Okay. Get some mukbang. How are you supposed to get 30 chews? One, two, three. Already swallowed. Bruh. <laughs> Ooh, babe, this is a juicy one. Jackie asks, is there a time where you guys get bored of each other? No. Never bored. Mad? Fatigued? Annoyed? Stressed? God damn. Angry? I took the board, my horn. No, but bored, I feel like bored is the worst one out of them, really? right? Like bored? Yeah. How are you going to be nine years? Are we nine? I think nine. How can you be bored nine years in and you got all of 
eternity left, let's say 60 years or whatever, how long people live. Mm. So I get what you're trying to say, like bored as in like, your boredom comes obviously like in terms of like, you know, but I don't think- In terms of what? I don't know what, what I'm trying to say, like boredom in like, yeah, you've been with the same person for so long, you're not like getting anything new, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But not boredom as in like, damn, you're boring, I'd rather do this than hang out with you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Once you think about it, when Jonathan and I started dating, we're broke high school kids, you know? So it's like, I remember being like, oh, I can, we can't wait to do this and this, and like now we're doing what we wanted to mm -hmm. do. So it's it just gets more exciting to see what more we accomplish together. So I'm not bored. Annoyed, mad, stressed, maybe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Couples that have been out there for a while, you know what I'm trying to say. Ooh, ¿cómo superaste lo tóxico que era Jonathan cuando eran novios? She's saying, how did I, how do you say superar? I went through it, toughed it out. How did I tough out Jonathan's toxic face? I didn't. We broke up. Jonathan moved to Texas for like a month. You went to therapy. You worked on yourself. I worked on myself. Let me tell you something, guys. And this makes sense. I think she toughed it out because genuinely, I was very toxic, very machista, very bad person towards her in that sense. But at the end of the day, you knew I was like a good guy. If that makes sense, no? Mm-hmm. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Mm -hmm. Like, people loved me, respected, mm -hmm. like, I respected my elders still, like, and mm -hmm. there's guys that are, like, mean to their girlfriends, y les cae mal a todo mundo. And they're bums, and they're And they're like, I'm work. so glad you got, you, you see other girls, and you're like, I'm so glad that you guys broke up. Like, he was such a bad person. Whereas, like, you would try to explain things to your friends, or, like, other friends, or people that we had acquaintances, and it'd be like, what? Like Mutual Jonathan, people. Jonathan seems so yes. like, you know? That's how I got through it. Because yes, we broke up a lot, a lot, a lot, every freaking other weekend. But the reason, I think what you're trying to say is that I saw potential in you. Yeah. And I knew that he was, the, the best thing that I have always said is that Jonathan was a good person to everybody else but me. Like he was a good son, friend, whatever. Still he there. was just a bad a really bad toxic boyfriend and i'm not saying like like obviously we still had good times which is why i stuck around he was just toxic in the sense that he was super jealous i don't know you were crazy babe you're toxic like uh, mm -hmm. what is that there's a word for it mm -hmm. manipulative. manipulative yeah but you, you know you were a gaslighter manipulative yeah. todo. <laughs> no but you know that like for example cousin that you you're at family gatherings and they bring their boyfriend yeah todo mundo le cae mal because he's just like on the couch or like and he's he's that boyfriend of the cousin. Mm -hmm. I wasn't like that, like you know. Yeah, you were a like, vibe. I feel like if I was like that, you you probably would have. You're like guys. Con decirles, this is how toxic he was. I'm gonna just tell you the sentence, and you're gonna know. He did not let me follow a guy on Instagram, even if he was my cousin. He you're dumb. Me. You're dumb, babe. Not when have I ever told you I'm following your cousin, babe? <laughs> Bro, babe. Te doy la, te doy la mano y agarras el pie. First of all, all of this. First of all, can we say? That you unfollowed every guy first without me ever saying anything. No, you're such a liar. Every guy Hell that no. you didn't, um, like, personally know. No, you're lying. I and then you, I like remember this clearly. You expected me to do the same thing back, and I did it, and you got mad. No. Which is whatever, like, bad. I should have done it right away. But you, I just want to be clear. Mm -mm. You're the first one to do that. I remember I even you got so googly eyes, I was like... You were following like, yeah, I'm like, what's the point of them following? Because <laughs> you're following, you... Babe, do not like yeah, my name because right you now. freaking, you're, you're cut following... Cut the cameras, cut the cameras. You're following the jobs cameras. so cut quickly. The <laughs> when a disagreement happens... Babe, this is a podcast episode. When a disagreement happens, do you guys bicker back and forth or do you guys have a discussion? I feel like we used to bicker back and forth. Now it's discussions. Mm-hmm. Nine years later. <laughs> No, for the sake of our son, we gotta understand that, like, we've matured in that sense, right? Oh, the reason we have discussions now is because we do not fight in front of Franco. I think for a long time, it was like we would fight with each other, not knowing that we both wanted what was best for both of us at the end of the day. I think that the best thing that I realized, and I, it's like kind of shameful, I guess, to say that it was like pretty recent, is that Jonathan and I are on the same team. Like, we we're not fighting against each other we're fighting together for something you know and you showed compassion yeah i said it on the podcast and i just saw the bulb light up in blanca's face <laughs> she's like oh shit like i've never showed jonathan compassion mm -hmm. so yeah we have discussions now but girl we used to bicker we used to silent treatment each other you know my talk will fall apart 
How do you learn to move on from the past and focus on the future? I'm guessing like in a relationship, how do we learn to move on from the toxicity? I think guys, the best way to put it, you don't have a time machine. You can't go back in time. You just can't. It's impossible. So what does it matter? Why does it matter? Things that happen, things you guys fought about or like things that happened maybe while you were dating or stuff like like it does like you can't go back so you either choose to love the new person like because every day is a new beginning right mm -hmm. you either choose to love this person from now on and forget about it or just break up because if you're never going to get over it then you're just not going to have a happy relationship yep what i realized is that when you choose to forgive someone you choose to forgive them and you're not going to bring that up again you know so you can't be like oh well you said this and this happened and remember when you said that two years ago you can't so when i i feel like when we both started well when we both knew that it was going to be serious from now on we laid everything out on the table we're like this is basically our standards we both set boundaries don't you think like new boundaries because antes jonathan could walk all over me and i wouldn't care yeah. But I feel like we just laid everything out how we wanted it to be. Like, okay, we're gonna forgive. Yeah, in a sense, forget because you can't just be bringing it up again. So, yeah. And also, just knowing that he's what I wanted. You know, no matter what, I wanted to be with him. He was my person. <clears throat> and just realizing that two years on the road, you're gonna still be bitter about the same thing that you broke up over, you argued over. The best thing is to just leave them be and be by yourself. Look for someone else. Because then you'll never have a healthy relationship. I think. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Does the toxico still come out sometimes? No. Does it? No, she's super toxic, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> like, celosia, vice salen. I'm like, damn, babe, like, where's this side coming out? <laughs> and you know what it is? It's fucked up, but. I'm trying to spice up the relationship, babe. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I'm not gonna say I don't like it sometimes, but. <laughs> yeah. Um, I haven't been toxic and. No, actually, it's never with her. Like, we're, we'll be at, like, a setting. And you know how there's some like disrespectful guys and they like stare at your girl for too long and that pisses me off So it's not like she did something wrong. It's like me like Because you're obviously trying to disrespect me by doing that, you know, <laughs> does that make sense? Say he like he was just staring at me for no reason like you're still disrespecting me. like I don't I can't tell I can't put it into words, but it's like n nothing you can do can give me mm -hmm. you know what I mean? It's more like third things that you can't control but that's i feel like that's every man there's no guy in this world that's like I i'm okay with this guy just checking out my girl in front of me like or, or there's guys out there that are cool but <laughs> you're not cool sorry what made you change from being machista do you remember those times you wouldn't let me wear well you would get mad if i wore something mm. to school or something it's exhausting guys <laughs> it's exhausting being machista being just a bad guy like it's exhausting. You you fight more. You're always like your stomach's always hurting. Like oh like I mean, should I text her? I fucked up. Or simply just like trying to hide shit. Like my friends invited me to the party this weekend, but I don't really want to take her. Like I'm just gonna lie or, or do something, you know. So it's like fuck. Like I was like it's just I'm done with it. I'm too old for this. Show. I was literally 19, but yo era un desmadre desde los 15, you know. So I was like you know I'm I'm done. My party life is over. Nah, babe, you wouldn't lie to me. You would break up with me, go to the party, and then get back to me together with me on Monday. You remember that? No, I can genuinely say all our fights were genuine. It's not like I picked a fight to break up with you, honey. <laughs> Be fucking for real. That's what Wait, I think. so do you think that you think that these like thirty-year-old machista men don't get exhausted or what? Because you know, there's a lot of yeah, guys that are still don't. machista. Or their like ego is just so strong, you know. Mm -hmm. I could not, I could not see myself being like that anymore, guys. When people say machista, I think of the guy that expects dinner to be served as soon as he gets home from work or something. And the other day, I got insecure and I told you, I asked Jonathan, I was like, "Babe, do you ever get like mad or you know feel some type of way about me not cooking?" <laughs> Remember, I asked you. <laughs> what did you say? I was like, no, I haven't even thought about it. I was like. If I did still have like quote unquote normal job, like I would have mm -hmm. come home tired and stuff, you wouldn't, I would never expect like a freshly cooked meal. Like even if you went to McDonald's and brought home chicken nuggets and had them ready for me, that would be more than enough, you know? Mm -hmm. Like I, there's some guys that expect like su mole, su todo, warmed up con tortillas when they sit down. 
like me like i would i would appreciate anything like mm -hmm. and that's sort of how it was when you did work mm -hmm. like you'd be on your way home like him picking up it worked out perfect because you would be like i have a hello fresh sponsor <laughs> and i would have hello fresh ready you know mm -hmm. what were we saying oh about the relationship changing after having oh um everyone asks us this guys but i don't like our relationship Mm, I think that when people say that you fall more in love with your partner is true because yeah. you see how they are with the baby and for me like seeing jo how Jonathan is for me I honestly was kind of scared because I thought Jonathan would be a little bit more rough towards him just because he's a guy and he's been a boy brother. Level up brother but just seeing him it's like it eases me you know and I'm like okay like I know Franco's gonna grow up being an emotionally aware child but like a strong one too strong so one. just seeing how he is makes me fall more in love and also I think that it kind of helps in the way that our arguments the reason why we don't argue or fight anymore is because we have a child in the middle and he's always with us 24 7 so we we don't yell we can't <laughs> cuss we, like even like you, you guys have heard us say oh you freaking whore that's what we Babe, do you even know? Do you hear us? Yeah. <laughs> like we call each we other call each other whores. whores, but the B word is out the picture. I don't know why. <laughs> Ooh, that's so funny, but yeah, like stuff like that. I think it just makes us more aware. Yeah, I guess when I say it hasn't changed, I'm just thinking negatively. Yeah. Which no, oh, positively, no. yeah. Like I love her more. I appreciate her more. For parents out there that are either pregnant or you want to become a parent, don't ever like say I'm gonna be like this. Yeah. Because it, karma is so funny, or God is so funny, that it's just that, like I was always like I'm gonna be the strong dad, like blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. and Blanca's like no, I'm gonna be emotional. And now we're kind of flipping. I'm a little bit like yeah. babe. I do not like to hear him cry. <laughs> Fix it, whatever. Because sometimes I'll be driving. I'll be like. Dude, do you not hear him crying or something? Whereas, like, now she's like, Ay, se cayó de la cama, whatever, you know? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, he's gonna be okay. And I'm like, yeah. dude, he did what? Like, what the heck? And, but yeah, I'm very much in the middle. It's so funny. I told Blanca, I was like, because she's like, what do you think about crying and how some dads say crying is bad? I'm like, this is what I've always told my brothers too. Never cry for physical things. Like, you fall and you hit yourself, or you fall or you, you hurt yourself. Do not cry. Like, mm -hmm. tough it up. Because that's what being a man is for. I mean, man, man is for. That's what being a man is. Like, toughing up physical pain like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. I feel like it does come good in the long run. Like, tattoos, vaccines, all that. Though. Building a good pain tolerance is good for men. Mm -hmm. uh, but it is okay to cry for emotions. Like, your dog dying. Your someone passing away. You're stressed. Whatever. I was like, you know. Yeah. I'm going to tell Franco. Cry when it's emotional. I do not want to see you crying because the soccer ball hit your nuts. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, that's, I feel like that's a good balance. He'll know when to cry, you know, like we'll know when he's actually hurt. Yeah. Know? Yeah. I'm not going to be like, you all, oh, you fractured, you broke, you broke your, your arm. arm? Don't, don't cry. cry. <laughs> no. How do you guys enjoy your sex life while being parents and working? Are there any tips currently struggling? Ooh. What's your name? Say her name. Just kidding, though. No, it literally no. says unknown. Oh. <laughs> um, for me, I think one of the best things right now is because I'm not on birth control, so my libido is pretty, like, normal. I think libido? When, what is it? Libido? 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 Is it both? I don't know. It's libido. 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 <laughs> I've always heard libido. Oh, libido. But is, I might be wrong. It's back to normal, because when I was on birth control, it was pretty low, right? Oh, say? yeah. And... Now that I know, like, understand my cycle and stuff, I know how my sex drive it. I feel like Jonathan can go whenever, you know, period. Yeah. And so, basically, it's not, like, scheduling, but kind of scheduling our intimacy times, you know? Just knowing when I'm at my peak, when to get things going. Yeah, guys, this situation is very... That's why it causes a lot of divorces, a lot of breakups, because it's not just black and white. Common sense, yes, but, like, you don't want to say this out loud because then I feel like it hurts a relationship. Like, yeah. I've never told Jalissa or Blanca after, like, having a baby or when her libido was down for... I never said, I need more sex. Like, I've never said that because I feel like once you speak that out into existence, like... Yeah, I don't know. It just hurts the relationship. I don't know how to make sense. Maybe it is a good thing to communicate, but it's also like, I don't think things like that should be spoken because they're very bad. Don't you yeah. think like it, when a guy has to tell his wife, I need more sex, 
then when she does give it to you, I feel like it's not the same because you had to ask for it. Yeah. So what did I do when I noticed her libido was down? Okay, let's let's try to examine the problems. Birth control was affecting her body, and two guys, I was very honest with myself. I, it hurt me to like be like this, but I was like, no, like when Blanca met me and we were having sex five times a day. Oh shit. <laughs> 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 like that. I I had like I had a six pack. I was fit. I was you know good looking. And I was on birth control. And now I was like I gotta examine myself. Like I got really really chubby guys, and I can't expect her to be maybe like she's a great woman, right? And I'm sure you'll say, babe, that's never <laughs> mattered. But as a man, guys, we have to take a kind of accountability for ourselves. Women out there as well. You can't just be like I got fat. Deal with it. Go down on me. Like, or whatever, you know, like, I'm being very raw with you guys. Like, we're going to be, I feel like I'm on a podcast. That's why there's a different side of me coming out. But um, you can't expect your wife to be the same as when she met you. If Blanca's never changed, she's hot as always. But I gained a lot of weight. I, I let my, I don't, I didn't cut my hair as often. I would get shaggy. You guys saw me. So I was like, no, Jonathan, like, you can't be mad at your wife for not going at it as many times when you have changed drastically. Uh, for me... This is the way I explain it. When Jonathan says that he was chubby and shaggy, whatever, he was not confident at all. Yeah. Like, he was super, super his low confidence was so low that he, we would fight more, you would be more stressed, oh, you would be yeah. more mad. Oh, yeah, that's, that's a good point. So, in that, if you guys have heard our podcast before, you know that we talk about foreplay and not foreplay in the sense 10 minutes before you have sex. About foreplay in the sense the minute that you wake up, you have to treat your wife nice, respectfully, and f give her that foreplay so when you're ready to get it on at night, she has nothing to be mad at you or stressed at you about, so she's gonna be able to do it, you know? So I feel like when Jonathan started losing weight and he started getting confidence, feeling like himself more, he we stopped arguing as often because he was like, more he confident. wasn't, yeah, you were more confident, you weren't as stressed, you weren't as mad all the time, like, no, you weren't easily no you weren't ir ir irritable yeah like you wouldn't get you wouldn't get irritated as much and that changed because every morning we would kind of get like bicker and get mad and now like in the morning he we just have a normal morning routine and then at, in the afternoon and stuff we do still have natural stressors here and there but not to the point where i don't want to have sex at night because i'm mad like i just want to go to sleep and i'm tired yeah. now it's like i look forward to our cuddles at night you know because all of those factors are coming in so you might say oh it's because i was fat no it's because of the way that you acted when yeah. you weren't confident very good point that's how i wanted it. i think it's a little it. bit of both <laughs> okay <laughs> but no definitely what you're trying to say because how often or not like your man treats you like shit all day and then he still expects you yeah. at night too it's like no that's not how it's it works sucky, sucky. yeah bombastic side eye criminal offense how do you guys divide housework and chores I think we have a pretty good routine. Mm -hmm. I'm going to leave you guys with a saying that my mom taught me. Cooking, cleaning, doing your laundry, sweeping is not a woman or a guy thing. It's a survival thing. My mom's like, when I, when you move out, when you turn whatever age, you move out, you're making money. I want you to ha have your own place and you learn how to cook. You learn how to clean. Because you, if, if you don't move out and you don't have a woman yet, how are you supposed to know all these things? Mm -hmm. So that's what my mom taught me. That's how she raised me. So gracias a Dios. We don't have like, I want to say, yes, the common sense guy and girl yes. things do exist in our in our household right i think our the way that we divide it is just how the day flows like if i have time to wash the dishes i'm gonna wash them if i'm putting franco to bed and jonathan has time to wash the dishes he's gonna wash them you know it's it's whoever has time to do whatever but it gets done essentially things that are like in the gray area we take turns sweeping uh, dishes cooking i cook dinner sometimes she doesn't but things that are very like she does not touch the cars like I go change the brakes, I change the oil, I do all that, and then I don't, I've never scrubbed the toilet in a long time, <laughs> unless I have Taco Bell, so, I'm sorry, but, anyway, like, stuff like that, if that makes sense, like, I haven't put Windex on a mirror in, in, yeah. in, in a long time, yeah. you know? Do you know each other's love language? What's my love language, babe? My top one, I all of them, but what's the top? Top, top right, right now. One? That's what I'm saying. Okay. Okay, we'll go into that. I uh, right now just changed. Recently it just changed. No, it changes just changes like every three months. 
What's my what, what I now? can remember? It was physical, and then it went to uh, time, like together. What's that called? Quality time. Quality time, and now, right now, I kind of want to say you're going into your words of affirmation phase, mm -hmm. like the whole, like, do you like that I don't cook for you or something like, like you, <laughs> do you want, like that? I um, want reassurance. Do not get mad. Reassurance. So. Yeah, and I think yours. Uh, what I think I yours is acts of service. You can say anything. Mine's. I'm pretty good. Yours right is now. acts of service mm -hmm. because I know sometimes that you. You're like, oh, oh, like last night. Oh, I forgot my water. I brought it for you. Oh, you did? Yeah, that <laughs> you means know? a lot to me. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> um, is there ever that what if whenever you guys separate Mexico bachelor parties? No. The what if? Like the scare? Yeah. Oh, hell no. <laughs> Absolutely not. Uh, there's a what if like what if they kidnap her i'm freaking scared and <laughs> and when i like i'm like oh, like i don't want to tell her to text me because it's a girl's thing like have fun like girls night going with your friends i don't want to sound toxic but I, for me <clears throat> i have trauma for when she got in a car accident and she never texted me back so i was like oh can you just please text me like when you get there when you leave not to be a toxic but to know like you're okay yeah. yeah guys bad news bad news the camera keeps overheating it's literally like being dramatic. It's honestly. like, yeah, it's cloudy. <laughs> 61 degrees, bro. Cloudy with a chance of meatballs. Guys, if you don't know, boom, this is our shirt, Vibe and Co. Shop. I don't even know the link to our own store. Vibe and Co. Dark it's going to be downstairs. Anyways, downstairs. downstairs. Oh my God. <laughs> I go to the gym because I can't afford therapy. Who can relate? Do you recommend going through the toxic stage to get where you are now or no? No. I always say this, guys. Our relationship should not be goals to you. We are an exception made from literally God. <laughs> because yeah. I've always said this. Like, do not settle. Don't wait for them to change. Like, you do not have to do that. You don't have to go through a toxic phase. I don't think you should ever, ever have to go through that. Mm -mm. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I don't see, I'm trying to see how, like, maybe I can say yes to just to play, like, devil's advocate, no. but there's no, like, if you don't have to, like, don't do it. Yeah. Okay, well, then I'm on a sweet I'll note. tell you this, though. I'll tell you what. I, I feel like if your relationship is perfect at the beginning and you don't go through those hardships, I do, have seen that down the road they come up. Yeah. If they're not dealt with early. It's like a weed, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Better to get it early on than when it's like huge you know yeah okay this will end on a good one okay what is one thing you guys love about each other uh, oh what should i say about now you? updated because it's an updated q a yeah i love that i love that you always 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 put others before you I don't love it because That's a I get and a curse. yeah I get mad at you, but you at the end of the day I'd rather be with a person like that than not be with a person like that. Yeah, I love how you are. How what's this? In? I eat Taco Bell. I love how not outspoken. How would I say it? I love how sure about yourself you are. You know, like I feel like after like a get together, I'll go home and I'm like, fuck, did I say too much? Did I say too little? Do they like me? And Jonathan, he's he's just he's his his, his true self. He's confident into who he is. He's like, if they like me, good. If they don't, I don't give a flying duckling, you know? Yeah. And I love that about you. I've learned recently, guys. I don't know what hit me, but I do not try to be, like, friends with anyone anymore. Yeah. Friendships come if they're genuine. Yeah. So I used to be, like, at, like, influencer events and meetings. I'll be like, I'm going to try to be, like, if they like me. Now I'm yeah. like, hopefully you don't like me because I only want friends that are real. Yeah, and it, it works for me because if I ever come to Jonathan, I'm like, hey, babe, like, I'm feeling this. He's like, why do you care? Like, if they like you, good. If they don't, don't. If they talk to you, good. If they don't, it's literally fine. So he definitely helps me out a lot in that way. Yeah. But, yeah, I think that's it for today's Q&A, guys. Let us know if you liked it. If you liked our little mukbang. Should we do more mukbangs? We haven't I had, think so. We haven't done one in a long, long time. Yeah, I'm kind of into mukbangs now. <laughs> <laughs> Not us like turning to a them. mukbang channel. Con Franco eating a taco. Oh, <laughs> that would be so or eating cute. seafood boil. Oh. The dirtier than juicier yeah. it is, the better. We should do a seafood boil next. Yeah. Hopefully they open this one no soon. No gloves. No gloves. And with a white shirt to see how much we <laughs> fuck up. Alright guys, well that's it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, and give us a like. It's literally free. Yeah, and Thank it helps you. out the channel a lot, guys. Yeah, and Franco's college tuition. Yeah, anyways, later. <laughs> Why you think like a bad <laughs> 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 Ooh.
Ay, ¿qué es lo que